time to speak. Uh, maybe just for context as we move on. Uh, Jimmy Wanji, uh, as I said as, as we began, we are not discussing the personality. We are not much interested in the personality of Jimmy Wanjiki. What arouses our interest are the things that Jimmy Wanjiki has brought to light. To light. Uh, let's take, for example, this issue of, uh, of SGR. Uh, Jimmy Wanjiki has talked about this issue of SGR from the time they disagreed with the Oruto government. And he said, this is what we were agreed, this is how SGR was supposed to be done. It was supposed to cost about, uh, did he say around 60 billion? But it ended up costing much, much more. Nobody has come out to uh, uh, to to clear the air and to tell us you know, what Jimmy is telling you about SGR is not true, or this is what these are the facts and these are the facts. Right now, several weeks down the line, since Jim started talking about this issue of public debt and audience debt and all these things, nobody has come out from the government, even though we didn't have CSS at that time. But the ministry, is the, the, the treasury is not short of people. The PS is there. The central bank is there. The Kenya Revenue Authority is there. The Office of the Auditor General is there. The Office of the Controller of Budget is there. None of them has come out to speak to tell us, no, listen, this guy is lying, lying to you. These are not facts. Nobody has presented to us alternative facts so that we can be able to count what Jimmy has said. So, what interests us these days to say these things that Jimmy is saying, could it be that it is true? And if it is true, do we really have a country here? If we are to continue at that rate, where will we be 10 years from now? So let us uh, really uh, just, uh, uh, make it as objective as possible. Whether Jimmy wants to be a politician or not, whether he wants to be president, I think that is another story. We can make a space another day to come and discuss that. But today, these things that Jimmy has saying from uh, 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 from our uh, from our perspective as members of the public, uh, you know we have experts here who can be able to diagnose uh, to dissect these figures for us. Let us make it as objective as possible without necessarily going into personality issues uh, with uh, with the Jimmy Wanjiki. But uh, that time, is, let me ask you this: Will it be a if something is not of public interest, do you think people will give it time to discuss about it? If we make it a public subject, they will have to respond to us. But if we don't make it a public debate, do you think they will respond? They will not. That is why we have. Uh, so I think that is why the host thought it wise to put up this place so that we can make it an issue of public interest. We can talk about it and we can begin to demand answers. Actually, if they don't respond this time, I think it is high time people write to them, to seek responses to them, and demand to know. Kenyans should demand to know. There are these allegations have been put forth as members of the public, as taxpayers. People who finance this economy, we want to know the position of the, of the government, government concerning what has been said. Yeah. yeah. And that is all. Uh, 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 sorry. That is why I'm saying yes. we need to demand Jimmy to come to the public and engage us before we can ask, start asking questions from the institution. These are strategies question when he's on the media platform. We want him on the space. He says he has been funding the space. Let him come to the space, give us data, give us evidence, and then we can discuss from there. Just here, say it's not enough for us to go out and demand answers, and answers to the question. Let him table what he has, the document he has. Then we can criticize the document. Then we can demand but without that, whatever he's saying is just here. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Femi. Whatever he says is just here. Of course, as I said, we are all uh, discussing this thing from possible issues, so all opinions are welcome. Uh, let me move on to hear somebody else uh, about this. Konamtuana uh, Metali. Hello, Dr. Can you hear me? Yes, Metali. Karibu sana. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, as you've mentioned, with 
removing the emotion aside of the Jimmy Wanjig person and looking at the facts of our public. I've taken some time to research on where Jimmy is coming from. I've taken, a, I've taken initiative to look at the treasury budget books that are public to all of us in uh, treasury.go.ae budget it outlines all the appropriations that have been passed in the last um, we have approved 2 trillion Kenyan shillings in the last 10 years from the last regime before that we had a carryover of 2.3 from Kibaki so he's right what has been passed in law was 4.3 what we've borrowed more is the six trillion that he's talking about through domestic debt and domestic debt in simple terms is treasury bills and treasury bonds just as an example today i've seen cbk has published an uh, a reopened ifb which was a 6.5 year loan and a 2023-17 year loan so cbk sorted to collect 50 billion but you know the whole country ran and banks parastatals individuals pensioners they went and put money towards that 50 billion and they've raised 156 billion as of today it's on the cbk website it's public for all of us the reason that debt is keeping on growing and it's not coming down is because cbk is keeping on reopening old bonds and uh, people are jumping on and buying them so that is one gap that we are having and the reason why they are opening these ifbs are infrastructure bonds and jimmy said them on tv yesterday if they are not in the budget or they're not in the appropriations act that was passed last year what are they going to fund because they're not funding a borehole they're not funding roads what they are funding is salaries as we speak the last 12 months we only collected 2.1 trillion in revenue our debts last year were 1.56 just rounding up to 1.6 70 percent of what we are collecting goes to pay debt 30% is what we are left with to go to county government and to go to paying salaries. So the, the first charge in every revenue that's collected by KRA and pushed to CBK for the control of budget to push out to the ministries is debt. So if 70% of what we collect goes to pay debt first, we're only left with probably three or 400 billion left to pay salaries. And currently, as we know, I had in a different forum, uh, Dr. Kuro, the constitutional lawyer who drafted up the constitution. They are trying to draft a bill for called Punguza Mizigo, right? Right now, our, our salary stands at 1.1 trillion. So where is the domestic debt coming in? So we borrow domestically, which is against the constitution because in the PFM laws of our constitution, section 15, uh, subsection 2c says clearly we only borrow for development and not recurrent expenditure recurrent expenditure means we cannot borrow domestically to 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 repay loans we cannot borrow to pay salaries so over the last 10 years we have been borrowing money to sustain our huge wage bill of 1.1 trillion because once we pay debt we don't have any money left to pay salaries so what does the government do they borrow domestically through bonds and bills, but they use the terms infrastructure bonds. But those infrastructure bonds cannot be located on any Appropriations Act for development. So I think that's where Jimmy is coming from to understand why is where we where have we paid in the last ten years? Uh, uh, we've had a budget. I mean, sorry, we've had an expenditure budget of fourteen point six, but we've collected from tax had untaxed money 13.3 trillion we should be having a deficit of 1.3 it comes down to the domestic debt none of the appropriations acts in the last 10 years have ever approved domestic borrowing 
to go to any funding in government, any funding in um, uh, development. So that is where the gap is. And this debt is going to keep on growing and growing, growing and growing. As we speak, the next 11 months till the end of June next year, we owe 1.8 trillion in external and domestic debts. And if we're only collecting 2.1, 2.2, that means in the next 12 months to June 30th, 2025, life is only going to get harder. And that's why you're seeing Kendra wants to create toll stations on the Southern Bypass, Thicker Superhighway, Eastern Bypass, a way to collect revenue because the finance bills were rejected by the Court of Appeal. So they are finding ways to add taxation because if the finance bills were rejected for 2023 and 2024, what ways can the government find ways to collect money? But it's on, I feel like it's only going to get tougher in the next 12 months. So removing the emotion aside, whether Jimmy is right, who he was before as a person, we're going to hit 80% of what we collect going to debt repayments. Um, and that's, we're not in a good place, to be honest. Thank you.